Welcome to Movie Caps. Today, I will show you a psychological thriller from 1999, titled, The Talented Mr. Ripley. Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. Tom Ripley is a young man, struggling to make a living in late 1950s New York City using his talents, forgery, lying and impersonation. One day, while working as a restroom attendant at a fancy Manhattan hotel, he meets a Princeton graduate, who bribes him to work at an alumni party, by playing the piano, because the guy just broke his hand and cannot play. Ripley accepts. Then, at the cocktail party, Ripley is playing piano with a girl, when a wealthy businessman named Herbert Greenleaf comes and approaches Ripley. He is the father of Dickie Greenleaf. He meets Ripley and looks at his jacket. He notices that he is wearing a jacket with a badge that represents Princeton College, the same college to which Dickie goes. He asks him if he knows Dickie, and Ripley replies that he does, and Mr. Greenleaf believes him because of the blazer. After this small introduction, both of them go for a walk, and Mr. Greenleaf tells Ripley to meet him at his docks the next day. Ripley goes and returns his borrowed blazer, revealing that he lied to Mr. Greenleaf, and does not know anything about his son Dickie, and doesn't go to Princeton either. The next day, he meets Mr. Greenleaf at his docks. Ripley's personal life is soon revealed after the party, where he lives in a small two-room apartment, in a rundown part of the city. His hometown and origins are unknown. It is implied that several years earlier, Ripley came out as a homosexual to his parents, who reacted by throwing him out of their house, and severing all ties with him. Now alone, Ripley struggles to get by without family support, and searches for his one true love, as an outlet for his loneliness. At the docks, Mr. Greenleaf tells him a little about Dickie. He tells him that Dickie is very spoiled, and that he is currently in Italy. Dickie hated his father, which is why he left and went to Italy, to live his life without his father. Mr. Greenleaf presents a proposal, and tells him that he wants Ripley to go to Italy, and convince Dickie to come back to the United States. He also offers him a lot of money if he brings his son back. After listening to this, Tom instantly accepts this proposal, even though he knows nothing about Dickie. He does not know how he looks, or how he behaves whatsoever, but he still accepts this proposal because of the money. The next day, he leaves for Italy. During his journey, he meets a young and wealthy textile heiress named Meredith Logue. During their brief conversation, he impulsively pretends to be Dickie. When she asks him his name, he does not give it a second thought, and instantly introduces himself as Dickie Greenleaf. The Greenleaf family was quite famous for their wealth, which is why Ripley pretends to be Dickie. He thinks that it is better to be a fake somebody than a real nobody. Shortly after his arrival in Italy, Ripley starts to spy on Dickie. He looks at him via a telescope, and finds out that he likes to go to the beach with his fiancée. He finds out everything he can about Dickie from a safe distance, before actually encountering him in person. One day, Ripley decides to go to the beach and finally meet him. Ripley goes to the beach, and fakes an encounter with Dickie and his fiancée, Marge Sherwood. He attempts to convince Dickie that the two met at Princeton. Ripley is a smooth liar, and tries to convince him that they both used to go to college together. After a brief conversation, Dickie believes Ripley, and thinks that he must have forgotten him. And with Dickie believing his lie, Ripley steps into his life. Ripley becomes Dickie's friend through sweet talk, never revealing his true intentions. After becoming good friends, Dickie invites him to move in with him and Marge, to which he instantly agrees. They go out to clubs and party. Late at night, they would go to karaoke, and even go to Dickie's boat to have fun. One day, Ripley discovers that Dickie has a forbidden lover. He speculates, that Dickie being with this woman means that he is disloyal, and that he is cheating on his fiancée Marge. He decides that he can further trap Dickie by revealing the truth. So, he later visits Dickie and discloses that his father paid him to travel to Europe, and persuade him to return home. This revelation infuriates Dickie, he declines the invitation, and suggests Ripley go back to America, and inform his father that he has no intention of ever returning. The two concoct a scheme for Ripley to wring additional funds from Herbert Greenleaf, by regularly mailing letters, suggesting Dickie is wavering and will likely return to America, if Ripley can remain in Italy and continue applying pressure, meaning that Ripley knew Dickie would rip off his father with Ripley, which is why he told him the truth. Ripley sees Dickie's signature, and remembers it in his mind so that he could use it in the near future. Other than lying, Ripley could also do mimicry, and copy other people's signs. Both of them decide that they will travel to Rome. The next day, on a jaunt to Rome, Ripley meets Dickie's friend Freddie Miles, who treats Ripley with barely concealed contempt. Dickie spends more time with Freddie, and gives less importance to Ripley, which obviously Ripley does not enjoy. 
Dicky decides that he will spend time with Freddy, and tells Ripley to go and explore Rome in a cab. He also tells Ripley to meet him on the train to Italy during the night. Later, Ripley waits for Dicky on the train that was supposed to take them back to Italy. However, Dicky does not show up, and he goes back to Italy all alone. When he goes back, he finds himself alone in the house, so he decides to take advantage of this opportunity, and starts to impersonate him by wearing his clothes and shoes. While Ripley is doing all of this, he is caught in the act by Dicky. Dicky walks in, and tells Ripley that he came with Freddy in his car. Ripley gets exceedingly embarrassed, after his true nature is revealed. Dicky is not bothered by this, but still feels suspicious about Ripley. Freddy makes fun of Ripley's behavior. Later on, a local girl, whom Dicky had impregnated, drowns herself after he refuses to help her financially. This sends Dicky into a downward spiral. He starts to get weary of Ripley, resenting his constant presence and suffocating dependence. Ripley's own feelings are complicated, by his desire to maintain the sumptuous lifestyle Dicky has afforded him, and his growing sexual obsession with his new friend. As a goodwill gesture, before Ripley returns to America, Dicky invites Ripley to sail with him for a last trip to San Remo, where Dicky is shopping for a new residence. While at sea, Ripley suggests he return to Italy the following year, and the two become housemates. Dicky dismisses Ripley's plan, informs him that he intends to marry Marge, and admits he has grown weary of Ripley. Upset by this news, Ripley confronts Dicky about his behavior, and lashes out in rage, repeatedly hitting Dicky with an oar, killing him. Ripley holds Dicky's dead body, as the boat slowly drifts to shore. To conceal the murder, Ripley scuttles the boat, with Dicky's body aboard, before swimming ashore. When the hotel concierge mistakes him for Dicky, Ripley realizes that he can assume Dicky's identity. He forges Dicky's signature, modifies his passport, and begins living off Dicky's trust fund. He uses Dicky's typewriter to communicate with Marge, making her believe that Dicky has left her, and has decided to stay in Rome. He checks into two separate hotels, as himself and as Dicky, passing messages via the hotel staff, to create the illusion that Dicky is still alive. His situation is complicated by the reappearance of Meredith, who still believes that he is Dicky. Ripley rents a large apartment, and spends a lonely Christmas, buying expensive presents for himself. Freddy tracks Ripley to his apartment in Rome, through the American Express office, expecting to find Dicky. Freddy is instantly suspicious of Ripley, as the apartment is not furnished in Dicky's style, while Ripley appears to have adopted Dicky's hairstyle and mannerisms. On his way out, Freddy encounters the building's landlady, and remarks on the piano music frequently emanating from the apartment. Freddy notes that Dicky does not play piano, and goes back to confront Ripley, who attacks Freddy, hitting him over the head with a heavy statue, murdering him. Ripley carries the heavy body to Freddy's car, drives to the woods, abandoning the vehicle and leaving Freddy's corpse lying on the ground in a creek, where it is soon discovered. Ripley's existence then becomes a complex game, with the Italian police and Dicky's friends. Ripley eludes imminent capture, and clears himself by forging a death note, addressed to Ripley, in Dicky's name. He then moves to Venice, and rents an apartment under his real name. Though trusted by Dicky's father, Ripley is disquieted, when Mr. Greenleaf hires American private detective Alvin McCarran, to investigate Dicky's disappearance. Marge suspects Ripley's involvement in Dicky's death, and confronts him, after finding Dicky's rings in Ripley's bathroom. Ripley appears poised to murder Marge, but is interrupted when Peter Smith Kingsley, a mutual friend, enters the apartment with a key Ripley had given him. At the climax, Marge, Dicky's father, and McCarran, all confront Ripley at his apartment in Venice, but luck seems to stay with Ripley. McCarran, after uncovering certain sordid details about Dicky's past, reveals to Ripley, that Mr. Greenleaf has requested the investigation be dropped. McCarran will not share his revelations with the Italian police, and asks Ripley to promise to do the same. In exchange for his candor, and implications made in Dicky's note, Herbert Greenleaf intends to transfer a substantial portion of Dicky's trust fund income to Ripley. Marge is dismayed at the resolution, angrily accusing Ripley of involvement in Dicky's disappearance, before Greenleaf and McCarran drag her away. Alienated by them and Ripley, Marge leaves to return to America. Now lovers Ripley and Peter go on a cruise together, only to discover that Meredith is also on board. Ripley realizes that he cannot prevent Peter from communicating with Meredith, and discovering that he has been passing himself off as Dicky. Peter and Meredith know each other, and would certainly meet at some point on the voyage. He cannot solve this dilemma by murdering Meredith, because she is accompanied by her family. Ripley enters Peter's room, and suggests the two remain below deck for the duration of the cruise, 
but quickly dismisses this idea, as he cannot offer Peter a legitimate reason for doing so. Ripley sobs as he strangles Peter to death, throws his body overboard, then returns to his own cabin, where he sits alone. Although Tom Ripley knows that he has gotten away with his crimes, and will never be brought to justice, he has sadly resigned himself to a solitary life, without love or acceptance. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out.